Brothers and sisters, friends and family, much love, much love, much love, and shalom. Much love, blessings, and shalom to all of you guys. Thank you guys very much for spending your very, very precious time hanging out, chit-chatting, reading scriptures. And we are reading through an incredible series, a series that is not only thought-provoking, but is absolutely life-provoking when we take it to heart. And the scriptures in of themselves, and I'm talking any scriptures, and I'm not just talking Yah scriptures, which is the book you're actually looking at right here. But whenever you take any scriptures whatsoever and you start reading them and you read them as a user manual for life, you will become astute in the ways of our creator. You will become knowledgeable in the ways that our creator wishes us to operate and the ways he wishes us to work. And it is something that in religion, not only have we been lied to, but we've been encouraged not to read from the old book of fables, right? <clears throat> we have been told about Paul. We have been told about the Romans road to Christ. And we've been told about a new way, a new way that we can pretty much live however we want to live. And it is acceptable to the new way of religion. Now, when you look at this and you hold the candle to what scripture says, religion always comes up short. There's not a single religion that you can show me that is viable when it comes to scriptures. So as people of our creator, we shouldn't be in a religion. We shouldn't be um, a group of people. And even those who say they're, they're Hebrew roots, I don't even exactly know what that means. <clears throat> because when you take on, excuse me, Hebrew roots or you take on any kind of traditions of men, there's all sorts of crazy stuff that we end up with. And so we are, I guess what you would call Hebrew people, Ebri, Ebrium, when you are talking about our forefather, Abraham, before he ever became anything. And Abraham wasn't a Jew. He was never, ever a Jew. And so a lot of people don't understand that, that Abraham was a Hebrew. He was a Hebrew man. And what that means, being a Hebrew, it means that you've crossed over. Crossing over is the entire point of our lives, what we should be doing. Once we find that there is a set of instructions and that we should be following these set of instructions, life becomes a lot different. There becomes a purpose and a meaning to this life because instead of us just racing to get to the grave to get life over, now we're racing to get to the grave to get to the other side. And the other side is either a place of goodness, a place of joy, a place of relief, or it is a place of torment, a place of terror, a place of uh, unhappiness. And so as we read through these scriptures, we are simply the people that are encouraging others to not only read scriptures, but to memorize <clears throat> and to understand everything that is in the Torah. The first five books of scriptures, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, are an amazing, beautiful set of rules and regulations that if you will keep and if you will walk with, then our creator says he will walk with us. There is a two-way street to this. It is not just something that our creator gives free with grace. He doesn't require anything because he does require something. He requires our obedience. He requires a group of people who are loyal enough <clears throat> and courageous enough to go against the flow. The people of our creator always look different when you're looking at the rest of the world. The people of our creator are Torah-based people that love our creator and love righteousness and holiness. You're not going to find them in a movie theater. You're not going to find them in watching TV, tell live vision programming. You're not going to find them <clears throat> doing worldly things because we've been called out of this. We've been called to set ourselves apart from the rest of the world. And so this is what we're reading today. And guys, we are reading out of Yah Scriptures. Yah Scriptures is the greatest English translation you will ever find. Bar none, I believe that without a shadow of a doubt, that we have been gifted with a very, very good Scriptures. This is a limited edition. So if you guys are looking for this print version, <clears throat> is, excuse me again. And again, you don't have to buy anything because at YahScriptures.com, all of the downloads are available absolutely free of charge. Every There's all the digital versions. There's all the versions we're about to use. They are, <coughs> excuse me again, a little cold here. Um, 
they are available and free of charge. And if you would like to help us and help our prison ministry, then you can purchase a Yah Scriptures. And it is a large, large book. Guys, this is 3,153 pages. It is large print, large font. You will never find a Scriptures that is qualified at all in this, as well as having 103 books. All of the Apocrypha, the, the, the good pieces of Apocrypha have all been restored. And there's still other pieces of Apocrypha out there, but these are the ones in this very first version that were the ones that needed to be restored to get back to the assembly and get back to the people. And so they are available, and you guys can download them. Now, what we are doing right here is we are heading into the very last book of the book of Nazarene, um, of the book of Yah Scriptures, and it's called the book of the Nazarene or the book of Khalidi. Now, when we are followers of our Messiah, our Christos, right? They call him Christ, or Mashiach. It means that, and it means that for everybody, if you are a follower of, of anybody and you call yourself a follower, then what they do is what you do as well, right? You're not a follower unless you like will take lead with what they do. Many, many, many people believe that our Messiah came and he's all about grace. He's all about love. He's all about unconditional forgiveness. And he's all about a new way forward that is contrary to the ways that his father set forth. And when you look at religion and the premise of religion, <clears throat> they have this bubbly, uh, lovey Jesus that is a, uh, he, he's just a rebel, right? He's a rebel when it comes to the commandments, because if you are in organized religion, you believe that the laws of our creator are no more because the son of the most high came and died so that you didn't have to keep them. That's what you call brainwashing. That is what you call being in a cult. A cult is defined as, as all of these things that you have other outside beliefs to make up a belief premise. And this is absolutely a cult because <clears throat> none of that stuff stands the course of time. None of that stuff is, is anything when it comes down to scriptures. Because our creator's son was very much pro-Torah. He was pretty, <clears throat> in fact, he says his ways are not his ways, but they're his father's ways. He says he comes in the name and of his father. He's doing the work of his father. And if you love him, he wants you to keep his commands. And the Christians are so brainwashed when Messiah says, if you love me, you keep my commands. They will tell you there's only two commands, and the two commands are to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And to them, that's the whole Torah. They don't have to keep anything else. There's no other parts of this. And they believe that by them abandoning the words of our Creator, that somehow you're claiming a kinship, a loveship. <clears throat> it's the same thing. When your parents tell you to do something, you tell them to get bent. Your parents are going to look at you and they're not going to be real happy. They're not going to go, okay, I'm, it's cool that you're telling me to get bent. It's cool that you have no respect for me. <clears throat> That's the same thing when we eat unclean food and we say, and we know it's unclean food and we say we're just, we're blessing it and we're praying away the, the, the stuff that makes it unclean. I've heard that over and over and over. I, I Christians uh, will just go and they will eat unclean food. And then they say that they love God with all their heart, mind, and soul when our creator has told us that pig and all these unclean foods are an abomination to us. We should not have unclean food passing our, our mouths. And so, and, it's, and the thing is, it's not even unclean food. It, it's, it's not even meant to be food. Things like pig are not considered food. It is not something that has ever been in our diets that we consider food until man came out and decided they were going to make uh, white pig meat, the next big meat, and um, they've defiled the world over it, right? And you tell anybody, and they, they, they're just, they cross their eyes, they don't know what to think. So Messiah is sitting here in the book of Khalidi, and he's walking with his Talmudim, he's walking with the disciples, he's, he's talking amongst them, and he, he says things, and this is, a, this is a, an incredible verse right here, in the very first one. Let's read this, and let's begin the discussion of this. <coughs> I can assure you of this, whoever stands by me, and this is from our Messiah, upholding my cause before men, him I will stand beside before the council of the Shamayim. Huge words. First of all, we need to figure out what is the cause of our Messiah, because Messiah says by his own words, whoever stands with him, upholding his cause, 
um, that's who is going to represent us in the council of the Shamaim, right? This is what we need. We need an attorney. We need a very qualified attorney. In fact, we need an attorney who is the son of the judge of the universe. That's what we need. And this is what we have. So now we have to figure out what the cause of the creator's son is. And it doesn't take a lot of understanding to realize that the cause of the the Messiah is the same cause that his father is. His father has asked us as people to be his people. Now, you cannot be his people if you are lawless. Lawless people are sent to hell. Um, there's just no place in the Shamaim in the world to come. So the cause that our Messiah's son has is the cause that his father has. He wants a representative to explain to people the coming rule of the Elohim, of the rule of, of, of the kingdom to come. And the rule of the, of the kingdom to come is going to be based upon the Torah. It's going to be based upon Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. It's going to be common everyday understanding of the Creator's ways and wishes. That's what we're going to be living under. That's what our Messiah is going to be the judge over. When the, when the city of Jerusalem comes down on Mount Zion and Messiah calls everybody over there, we will walk into the kingdom under the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator with the same rules and expectations that there are right now. <clears throat> and a lot of people don't understand this because they don't realize that there are rules and expectations because when we have been brainwashed in this so-called religion of men, <clears throat> which is exactly what it is, it's a problem because we don't know exactly what is going to be happening. So the cause of the son is the cause of the father. And so when we have, and excuse me for the interruptions, I kind of lose my train of thought. Things happen around here. But let's get back to this right here because we need to uphold the cause of our Messiah. Our Messiah is the representative of the kingdom who runs with the rules of the kingdom and so what we need to understand is that if we want to be a follower of Mashiach, then we need to do what he does. What he does is he upholds the laws, statutes, and commandments. He will be that one who gives us a nod when the, the council of Hashemaim. Guys, this stuff's real. We're going to stand before our, our, our creator. We're going to be naked before him. We're going to be in judgment. There's going to be all sorts of things. We need to align our lives right now for that exact moment, for when we're sitting before the council in the Shamaim. This is the time to do it. While we can still breathe, while we can still walk, while we can still think, while we can still operate, this is our time. Continue on, Messiah says this. Give no heed to what is said about me. It is already forgiven. Big words. But slander against the powers of the Ruach HaKodesh, which is the Holy Spirit. Everyone knows it is the Holy Spirit. We learned something very important here, guys, which is the hand of Yahuwah is unforgivable. Now, we've heard this before, but we didn't know exactly why. And there's always, everybody always wonders what the Ruach HaKodesh is. And when you read scriptures, you learn very, very quickly that our creator exists in many, many different forms. There's a things that everything around us is essentially him. But the power of the Ruach HaKodesh, we're defined right here by our Messiah, which says it is the hand of the Creator. And so when we're slandering against the power of our Creator, when we're slandering against His ways, that's unforgivable, right? Messiah has told us before that what they say of Him can be forgiven, but we don't go against the hand of our Creator. And also there's a Torah command that if you blaspheme, the name of our creator, you're put to death. This is how much disrespect that all of us in this world have gained and understand is that we don't, we didn't understand. First of all, we didn't even know the name of our creator. We thought his name was God. Once we got past that hurdle and we figure out his name is Yahuwah and we figure out all of these lies that we have been inherited against and everything, it all starts making a tremendous amount of sense. Now, the hand of our creator is all around us. It's in everything. I believe it's in every breath that we take. I believe it is in, it's just everywhere. It's the, the omnipotent power of our creator. And again, it's reiterated that if we slander against it, it's unforgivable. 
We don't know of any other sin in scriptures, anywhere in scriptures, that is an unforgivable sin. But we know from the regular 66 books and also the book of Chaldea here that this is something we all must very much understand is, is there is an a unforgivable sin. Continuing on, Messiah says, <clears throat> One of the twelve said, We will meet other teachers whose words will not be the same as those spoken by you. Yahushua said, This will certainly be so. For to each man his own road and his own light. But truth is truth, whoever proclaims it and must be obeyed. Okay, let's talk about this real quick. How do we know what truth is? Well, we only know what one truth is. We know what the Torah says. We know what Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy says. That is why reading Torah, understanding Torah, knowing it is so important because we will not be able to decipher truth in this world unless we know what the Torah is. Because when we walk with the Torah, when we have the spiritual protection of the Ruach HaKodesh that, that guards those who are in covenant with him, we have the truth. And you won't be able to be deceived. You won't be able to go into some little, uh, you know, I don't know, Mexican food joint and order something. And you're not going to sit there and be okay when they're serving up pork, right? You're going to go, hey, what's in this? What is this about? You're not going to just eat food that you don't know what is. That's part of understanding what Torah is. Those little tips and those little tricks that Hasatan gets where he gets unclean food into the people of our creator. That's where we have to understand what truth is. And that's just one example of it. Okay. Messiah continues on. He goes, and we're talking again about truth. However, truth is something rarely clearly seen. See, rarely seen clearly. And even many who see it have difficulty in describing it to others. It's a very good thing, right? I, I couldn't describe to you what the truth is other than I can give you examples of truth. I can tell you that the truth has been written down in scrolls and preserved for us throughout the years. It says things like, um, don't have bad weights and measurements. Don't harm the disabled. Don't drink blood. Don't look at your family naked, right? There's keep the, keep the appointed times of our creator. There's so much stuff that we have. So that's the truth. Continuing on, Messiah says, speak about the good and evil which are manifest in the lives of men and tell them each shall be judged according to his works. This is why we're here, right? This is why we are all studying as a group as we're trying to figure out the path forward and that every single day is going to be written down on the days of judgment that we will have to revisit this. Every bad word we said, every unclean thought that we had, everything that we have done, that we have brought evil into this world, and we're going to be judged. Even the things that we just simply think about that cross our minds, if they're unclean, we're going to be talking about this on the day of judgment. It's going to be a tough day. But guys, there is a day of accounting coming. We can't just keep living in the sin over and over and over because one day we will take our last breath. And if we have not turned to Torah, if we have not turned to our Messiah, if we have not turned to scriptures, then we're going to be doomed because we've all had plenty of time to sit down and read a book. We've all had plenty of plenty of time. Now, continue on. Messiah says, um, Yahushua said, and I just did it. Sorry, guys. Uh, right here, 14. That's a, uh, sl that's a slip to the left or right on this app, and it takes me back. Yahushua said, men will always go astray, but those who lead them astray cannot shun responsibility. Huge things, guys. Very, very, very huge things. Remember what I have said about those who stand behind the wrongdoings and foolishnesses of others, hidden from sight and untouchable by men. It would be better for them to have a millstone hung around their necks and be thrown into the sea than to suffer what they will for mis for leading innocence astray. Wow. This is the first time in, in any kind of scripture that we have where it isn't just a millstone hung around a person's neck when you harm a child, right? This is other things. And we're talking about hanging out and endorsing or allowing evil to continue on and not exposing it, not letting it be shown what the evil is. One of these examples is the Hallelujah Scriptures. These guys have ripped people off for 13 years. They have called, called CPS on families. They have done fraud. They have done wire fraud. They have harmed the assembly of our Creator. And not only that, but the Hallelujah Scriptures 
by them not shipping these scriptures into prisons for 13 years and telling people that they had, Deb and Ken or Max and Shalom or whatever you want to call these complete grifter Satanists, they will have millstones hung around their necks because they endangered people. If they would have truly been shipping the amount of scriptures in that people have been donating for, then every brother in, in change right now would have a Hallelujah Scriptures. It would be all over the prisons. It would be all in these libraries. Everybody would know what the Hallelujah Scriptures was. And I talked to dudes all over, the from from Arizona to New York to, to Texas, um, all over the place. Nobody has ever heard of Hallelujah Scriptures. It's very, very rare. There's little itty bitty tiny groups of people. But had the Hallelujah Scriptures actually been doing this, not only they, they would be so wealthy right now, instead of having half a million dollars in cash and millions of dollars in Bibles, they would be complete millionaires because Yah would have used this and their Bible cells would have just gone everywhere. But this is the problem when we let evil go. This is why we expose the Hallelujah Scriptures because it tells us that we need to let people know that there are people out there that are doing this. And people are donating thousands of dollars. They would they would order one scriptures and put a thousand dollars into Hallelujah Scriptures thinking this was going to go into the into people in chains or to do any kind of stuff. And all it did was it got sucked over to New Zealand and got taken off over there. And these guys are still running their grifts, still out there just running their a, a complete evil. Continuing on. Messiah says, be on guard against undutiful inclinations and work in harmony one with another. If your companion offends you, rebuke him without anger. And if he indicates regret, forgive him wholeheartedly, even though he offended, even though he offends you many times and is contrite, forgive him. Guys, we've heard this before, right? We've heard about Peter asking how many times when his brother offends us, do we do I do I forgive him seven times? Messiah goes, listen, let's talk about this. It's 70 times seven. 490 times is what we're talking about right out of the gate. And that's not a number. That's not the final line of the number. It's 70 times seven times 700, right? It's a nonstop. And Messiah tells us right here a couple of things, right? Um, B is it's be on guard, right? Anytime our creator or his son says be on guard, it's something we need to look at and understand what he's talking about. And he's talking about undutiful inclinations. Um, people that aren't doing what they think that, that you think they are doing, right? And then he continues on and he says, work in harmony one with another. That's very, very important. And then he, even more, if we have somebody, and guys, this is our spouses, this is our kids, this is our uncles and aunts, uncles, whatever it is. These are the people that when they offend you, we need to forgive them, right? But forgiving doesn't mean forgetting. It doesn't mean that you need to set yourself up for failure over and over and over. And that's what a lot of people believe that you, you know, forgiving means forgetting and that you set yourself up for abuse again. And that's not what it is, right? You don't have to offer your yourself up on the, the the abuse scale when people say, sorry, you you know what the people are capable of. We will forgive them, right? And even if they, they offend you many times and is contrite, forgive him, right? It's It hurts us more than it hurts the people when we're living in anger. When we have all of these things that are are egging us on every single night, when we wake up in the morning, when we're just angry people... Our blood doesn't pump right. Our hearts don't work right. Our, our body, we're always on edge, right? There's things that kill us when we live in this kind of anger. So when we um, run into things like this, instead of walking back with it and attacking ourselves, literally, we need to forgive them. We need to walk away and, and not sit there and just dwell on this guy just did me this wrong. This is the way, uh, you know, those things. Continuing on, Messiah says, or actually, no, the 12 said. Some of the 12 said, these things are difficult to understand, and we have the natural failings of men. Give us courage and strengthen us in the cause. Yahushua replied, have faith in what you do, for with faith you can move mountains or cause uprooted trees to replant themselves. All things are possible to those who believe them possible. Okay, um... Huge stuff, right? We've heard this before. We heard that faith can move mountains, that the faith of a mustard seed is 
is the greatest of all the trees because a mustard seed will 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 go in there and it's just a it's the smallest of all seeds and it grows up to this huge plant all these birds and everybody all hangs out in these things this is the same thing that when we have faith and understanding that not only faith in our messiah but faith in the system that's what this is all about when you guys walk in torah you put your faith and you put your loyalty and you put your star and you hook it to the, the wagon of Yahuwah. Yahuwah's wagon is full of Torah. It's full of right rulings. It's full of beautiful things that we have been told to do, not to do, and how to do it. So when the disciples are struggling and they're like, guys, they're like, Messiah, they're, they're, these things are hard for us to figure out. We fail like regular men. What can you what courage and strength can you give us? So after Messiah says this, right, all things are possible to those who believe, he, he, he gives them some tips, but then he does something else. Nevertheless, he strengthened them by a transfer of the Ruach HaKodesh so that they had the power of healing. And I think I'm going to leave it at this because there is a, an amazing thing that happened on the day of Pentecost. When our, prior to the Pentecost, pr when our Messiah died, when the temple was ripped from the, from the bottom to the top, it signified that no longer did we need the hands of man as our Levitical priesthood. No longer did we need this temple system that we had set up. No longer would our creator only talk to us between the, the, the cherubim, the, the angel wings, right, of the covenant, right? This system was gone. And what is happening, what happened when the day of Pentecost came is that that temple and the, the power, the Ruach HaKodesh, that only dwelled in various places and, and on his son, in his son, and right here at this point on these disciples, this was given to all of us. This strengthening that, that our Messiah just gave to everybody right here on this particular point is the same Ruach HaKodesh that is living and breathing and amongst us all. And is the it's a power that is to be wielded. It is a strength. And it is the arm of our creator that is involved in everything. And it is by his power that he's everywhere at all times. And that's a power to be very wary of. It's a, it's a power to understand can create light and day. It's a power that, that created human beings. It's a power that created all of this. And it's a power from our creator that our souls will have a place to go. There's a complete storyline with all of this from, from the creation to the final pieces to where the people of our creator are exiled or exodus away from the rest of the world. And that we all meet together in the city of Elohim. This is a storyline that I believe. Faith is a mustard seed. I truly believe that when we have faith, the Ruach HaKodesh, the hand, the arm, the, the power of our creator moves and he moves among his people. And there's always miracles happening all the time. There is so much in the spiritual world that is, that is taking place from the hand of our creator to the, the minions of darkness that are continually trying to take us every single day. So guys, this is my encouragement for everybody is that we read the scriptures that we walk in harmony with our creator, that we are called his people, right? Hebrews 8 does not have a house of Christian. It does not have a house of Gentile. It doesn't have a house of Catholic. It doesn't have a house of Mormon. It has a house of Yisrael and a house of Yahuda. That's the only thing that Hebrews 8 is talking about. It's not talking about any house of religion. Name any religion. It is not talking about that because when you read that promise of the renewed covenant again, it's talking about a world in the future where everybody knows the Torah. Everybody has already seen the Torah. We all know it. We're, we're in harmony with it, right? You don't have to explain it to your neighbor because they already know this. So guys, with this, we are those people who are the people of the future, the people seeking our creator. And guys, this is the right time to do it. This is a time right now to rip our families out of the ways of the world and to rip our souls out of the grasp of the devil and to seek our creator where he's able to be found. Guys, he's able to be found in these books. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. These first five books are the foundational basis of everything in scriptures. And if we don't know this, like the back of our hand, then we're doing a disservice to ourselves because we're out there in the world completely exposed and we don't even have the proper sword and armor that we can save ourselves with. 
And so guys, with that, this, this app right here is 100% free. Inside of this app, this is a Google app that works on tablets, phones, anything that's Google related. You can grab this, and if you're curious what the Torah commands are, or if, if either way, you can go to Yahoo and the Torah, Dot net, which is a website of ours, and it has all the Torah commands listed out, and these same Torah commands are right here. These are, if, if anything, if once a week, at least once a week, maybe once a day if you'd be willing, go through these and read these. Read these until you know that, the, without even looking, that it's be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, right? The herb bearing in every tree is for food. These are all the things that we are supposed to live by. These are the things that our armor gets sharpened and our knives become extremely wieldy. This is what we need to defend ourselves. So guys, much love to everybody out there. We hope that you have a wonderful day. Love to all. I'm out.